You know, when Nikon contacted me and said, do you want to try the Nikon Z8 for a little test drive? I said, sure, as long as I get to show off my epic bird videography. Oh boy, come on. Uh, all right. Mm-hmm. 8K footage. Okay, yeah, pick the hardest type of videography. But uh, for those of you new here or you found this video, I am a pro photographer that shoots mostly portraits and events. So this camera is more for like sports and action and wildlife, but I did shoot a little bit of a wedding this weekend, a family wedding, and it, the camera just made it so effortless. Let's start with the first thing I thought of when I unboxed it. Oh. Hold on. It's a package time. What's in the box? So, Mr. Nikon, does yeah. it feel like your old cameras? Oh, wow. What a good grip. Yeah? What a good... That's meaty. I just show oh. up. Oh. That's a meaty grip. That feels really good. You hear my voice just went higher like, octave? You're like, oh! So that happened on the podcast I have with my friend Mo. The camera arrived while we were recording, which was pretty great. But the first thing we both thought is how good it felt in the hand. That's meaty. And... I've been waiting forever for a, uh, a mirrorless camera to actually feel like a DSLR. And this one does. I mean, look, here's the Nikon D700 here. And look, 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 can you see? Can you see? Oh, okay, the D700 is a little beefier, but. <laughs> now the Nikon Z62 also feels nice, but there's just like a little bit missing on the bottom and Nikon finally added it. <laughs> I've been shooting portrait sessions with this Nikon Z62 and I actually added a little bit of an aftermarket grip at the bottom just to make it a little bit more comfortable. And look, at, look, look, it looks just like a Zate. So first impressions, fantastic. Uh, controls are very familiar if you are a Nikon shooter. If you're new to the Nikon system, it's pretty quick to pick it up, especially the same stuff I've said about Nikon in the past. The screen on the back is fantastic. The touch screen is so into it. It's like one of the best touch screens to change settings and to scroll through menus. I will say right away though that I kept trying to like turn this dial over here and I'm like, it's not a dial. Uh, so the Nikon Z62 line and Z7, they have the little mode dial, which I actually really like. Here you have a mode button. It's gonna be a very organized video. And I should probably check my notes. Okay, my second bullet is it's the Goldilocks of cameras. So I tried the Nikon Z9 and I thought that was just way too big, the camera. I'm not like a, you know, battery grip sort of shooter. I like very small and tiny cameras and I actually like the Z6 II because I can make it even smaller for travel. And then if I'm shooting an event or a portrait session, I could add this little aftermarket extra piece. Um, so that's the first thing, the, the Nikon Z6 II and the Z50, which are really tiny, are great small little cameras, but a little too small. For me, the Z9 is too big. This is fantastic, fits great. I think this is just, a, it feels like a professional mirrorless camera, like, because it is. So let's talk about my experience in shooting the camera in the different situations. I guess the most important thing is image quality and video quality. And I think that for a shooter like me, I love natural colors. I love natural skin tones. I'm not doing dark and moody and super editing my images. Um, although my scene here is a little dark and moody. I think that Nikon's files gel with how I work. Now, those of you out there that are like, yeah, you can take all kinds of raw files and make them all look the same. Yeah, but straight out of camera, you put the raw file in Lightroom and you just put a little color profile of standard on and the image is just whoop. The greens pop, the skin pops. Uh, so that is the best thing about the Nikon system is the files are just so vibrant. And I think that's why a lot of landscape photographers and wildlife photographers like Nikon because when you go to edit the images, the bird is just like, hey. Now, when you're shooting a camera for the first time, you kind of, there's this, this like little uh, discovery period, like what autofocus mode should I use? Uh, what works best in what situation? So when I was shooting the birds, um, if the bird was like on the ground, like I saw a robin on the ground, I would just use 3D 
with the animal eye detection and the camera just sticky sticks to the bird. Every now and then it would waver a little bit, but for the most part, 100%, 99%, it just sticks to the bird, okay? But as an experienced photographer that I am, as soon as there's a little warbler going through the branches and trying to, you know, hide from you, well, then I would switch to single focus point. And there's a lot of focus modes on this camera. <laughs> there's, there's like three dynamic ones, which is, you know, like a little box in the middle with some helpers. There's pinpoint, there's single, and then you have your different sort of shaped zones, um, which by the way, you can kind of deactivate some of these focus modes and just put your favorite in there. So I like that Nikon gave us some shapes, but um, yeah, they're kind of, some of them are weird, like the long one. <laughs> Although I will say for track, I did use the vertical one, which worked great with eye detection if you're gonna be shooting a runner. I did use, by the way, the uh, 300 millimeter PF adapted, and I've been mostly shooting the ZA with, an adapt with adapted lenses. With this one, with one of my favorite lenses, the 105 millimeter 1.4, and a Sigma 28 millimeter 1.4 lens, which I love. And the camera has been working as if it doesn't have an FTZ adapter on it at all. It's been working like native lenses on the Z6 II, which is fantastic. Now for the wedding, by the way, I wasn't the first photographer for the wedding. I wasn't even the second photographer. I was kind of like the stalky, relative, annoying uncle that, <laughs> we all hate. So I was trying to stay out of the way. So most of my wedding photographs are kind of from the side. It's almost like cheating. The camera picked up faces super easy. The only thing is every now and then it would pick the wrong face. So you just have to, as a pro, be ready to go from a super wide 3D to reducing your box to sort of include the person in the little box there. So you just have to know how to change the modes. And then when it was kind of time for the reception, I wanted to try flash photography. There is no mechanical shutter on here. So I was kind of like, what is this gonna do? Sync speed mechanical, it works. of things. Number one is it's strange that it has mechanical shutter. So there is like a mechanical, there's like a sound. Ooh. <laughs> I saw another video that uh, had a great suggestion to put, come on, come here, put this sound in. You could do it. Firmware, baby. Firmware 1.1. But what is great is that you can turn off the sound when you're shooting the ceremony. No one knows you're shooting, super silent. And because it has a fast readout, you don't have to worry so much about like, you know, rolling shutter, which you do if you shoot electronic with other cameras. And also for flickering lights and things that are weird, you can actually set a specific shutter speed to get rid of the flickers, which is fantastic. But one of the best things about shooting electronic is this camera, has ridiculous shutter speeds. If you wanna shoot 1.4 in super bright sunlight, the shutter speed can go over the usual max of one over 8,000. It's like one over 64,000 million. And that way you don't have to put an ND filter on, you don't have to like close down your aperture. You could shoot wide open in bright sunlight. I did do a little like hybrid coverage a la Taylor Jackson in my wedding portion of the day. And uh, it's so hard for me. But anyway, I put on just regular old 24 frames a second, 8-bit. That's right, 8-bit. Because I had already done, you know, 10-bit and 8K with the birds. I was over that. <laughs> but just to take a little bit of 4K video of the wedding and then shoot photos, uh, this little switch right here, record, I love, love. Okay, works as a wildlife camera, works as a wedding camera. <laughs> I also shot a portrait session with it. And a couple things to think about portrait session. This may be way too much camera for that because I've been shooting my portrait sessions with the Nikon Z6 II, which is a fraction of the price of this. But this was just so easy. It was like I was shooting, you know, 10 frames a sec. I had way too many photos, 10 frames a second for the kid walking at me. All the images are in focus. 
and the image quality is beautiful. But now you gotta think about, you're shooting portraits, 45 megapixels, that's a little bit more retouching, that slows down your computer a little bit more, that's more storage. The compressed full raw, I forgot what it's called, it's like a efficient mother, I think it's called, that's what it's called. It's like 30 megabytes, I almost said pixels. <laughs> 30 megabytes, which is not bad for a 45 megapixel camera. One thing that I wish Nikon would have included in this camera is there for JPEG, there's a large JPEG, a medium JPEG, and a small JPEG. You can actually make smaller files. But for the RAW, the days are over of a large RAW, a medium RAW. That means you could shoot like a wedding at 24 megapixels with this camera. That's gone, which is a little sad because you could have upped it for cityscapes, you know, lower it for an entire wedding, 24 megapixels, and then for your kid's little league game of is four megapixels, little league. So that's one of the things I wish was in this camera was maybe a little bit for, as a photographer shooting events and weddings and you know capturing 4,000 photographs, maybe a medium raw would have been really nice to have in the camera. And also it doesn't have the battery that the Z9 has, but I got a lot of shots on one battery charge. So it's rated for like, 200, 300 or something, but I shot hundreds, hundreds. I've, I'll put it here, how many I, images I shot with a little bit of video too. So overall, first impressions of the Nikon Z8 is an absolute winner for professional, for people who know the Nikon system. If you're coming from one of the Z cameras as an event photographer, this is a huge upgrade, huge upgrade. A couple of things you have to get used to. The electronic shutter sound is eh shooting silently is totally fine. And also the last one I forgot to mention, which is a little bit of a learning curve, is when you're looking in the viewfinder, there is no blackout. So yes, that's a great thing when you're doing action, you can completely follow the action like a video, you know, like a video of it and just snap photos. But when you're so used to a mirror closing, you know, when you take your picture, everything goes black for a second. And all of a sudden, the only thing you see are these little lines in the corner that are like... <laughs> Sometimes I didn't know I was taking pictures. You know, so I think I would like an option. Maybe there is an option. Let me know if there is. But that every now and then you get like a little bit of a click, 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 um, which I need. Thank you, Nikon, for sending it over. And I'll see you guys next time.